Wat boti sumpon udon tani. A talk on Tumma. 4 August 1963. Before long it is certain that this body will lie stretched upon the ground, discarded, devoid of vinyarna, useless as a rotten log. At this time I will give a talk on Tamma, a Deyasana, which is the teaching of the Lord Buddha, and which may be of value as Tamma Savarnani Sangza, a Tamma which brings profit to all of you who are listening. So you should listen attentively to the teaching of the Lord Buddha, and you will attain benefit both while you are listening as well as in the future. Listening to Tamma is necessary for all of us who are Buddhists, because Tamma is full of reason. Whoever behaves and acts either in the way of the world or in Tamma, it is Tamma that points out the way in both cases. Those who go the way of the world are likely to need it as a method or the skillful ways that they use in conducting their affairs so that they shall be right and harmonious for themselves. As for those who practice the way of Tamma, it will make for convenience, ease, and the avoidance of making mistakes. Because in doing anything, if we do not listen attentively, so that we do not understand and do not know the method to begin with, and act without having learnt about it, whether in the world or in Tamma, we are liable to make mistakes easily, and even if we get results, they will not be worthwhile. Therefore, all activities must depend upon our having first of all attentively learned all about them. Learning is thus essential and is a compass needle pointing out which way to go so as to get good results. For regardless of what sort of activity or business we do, if we have not learnt about it so that it is well understood, it is not likely to be done well, and this is especially so in Buddhism. So the Lord had the utmost interest in learning, and it is said that he trained himself for a long time in order to develop the Bādhami, the perfections, and he also trained all classes of Buddhists to know the way of good and evil, so that they may themselves go the right way. Even though, as we are told, the Lord was the originator, Sayampu, knowing and seeing by himself without relying on a teacher, he still had to go away to be ordained and to learn from the ways of nature which surrounded him and which drew his attention until he felt sorrowful and depressed and could put up with it no longer. Thus the capacity to learn by being observant or interested in reasoning were forms of learning that were intrinsically in him already. The Lord went out and was ordained, becoming like a beggar. He diligently applied himself to practice and to the development of meditation, pavana, getting rid of the conceited opinion, dirtimana, of being a noble and making himself to be like a beggar. He performed the spiritual practices of a contemplative, samarnatamma, living in the forests and hills so that anyone seeing him would not recognize who he was, for they would just see that this was a bald-headed monk. It may seem that the Lord did not learn from anyone, but, in truth, teachers taught him everywhere and all the time by day and night. The Lord looked and saw leaves falling from the trees, and he reflected on how, when they grow, they begin as tender shoots, after which their form steadily changes until they become old and fall, and how our lives in Sankaras are like those of the leaves, and there are many other things which are like the leaves which fall from the trees. The Lord investigated making comparisons and reasoning both externally and internally using his wisdom so as to find out clearly about the truth, because external and internal things have the same characteristics. In other words, they arise, they change, and finally they break up and cease to exist. When the Lord's investigation reached himself, he found that he had the same characteristics, and this is what is meant by saying that the Lord listened to the whole of Tamma, which are the ways of nature, while he was living alone in the forest. But even before the Lord had left home to become ordained, it seems that he received the highest training in the ways of nature. On the night when the Lord left home to become ordained, it is said that he saw all the concubines, minstrels, and entertainers in the palace seeming as if they were dead and as though it were a cemetery of corpses. It even seemed to him that the Lord himself was also of that nature, and so he had a sense of urgency in his heart to find a place of refuge. The attendance in the royal palace where we have dwelt from the day of our birth until now has seemed to be a gay and light-hearted place, but now in whatever direction we turn, it all seems to be like a cemetery of corpses. We cannot even know when this palace will fall down and be destroyed. Then 
examining reflectively within himself, those things which are sankharas make up our bodies which are constructed out of earth, water, air, and fire, thus forming an animal, a person, a man, or a woman. All of them must therefore have the same characteristics as all the forms of nature which we see now. It seems that nowhere is there anything that is stable and enduring which is suitable as a refuge and a shelter where our heart would be at peace. He could see only one way, to go away and be ordained so as to search for a quiet place in solitude so that he could diligently examine the underlying principles. In other words, to become quite clear in regard to that impression of a cemetery of corpses which the Lord saw on that night. He compared himself with all his attendants and saw that he was the same as them. As regards birth, we have the same nature as them. As regards old age, we have the same nature as them. As regards suffering, dukkha, and bodily hardships, we have the same nature as them. Examining outside, beyond the palace, throughout the whole earth, throughout the whole universe, he saw that it was all of this nature, and that there is no island or mountain where one can find peace, where one can find security and stability, and where one can have complete confidence, but that it is all subject to destruction and dissolution in the same way as ourself. Thus was the heart of the Lord obsessed with the idea of becoming ordained so as to examine birth, old age, sickness, and death carefully and reflectively to understand them absolutely clearly in his heart until he in fact went away to be ordained. This shows that the Lord learnt the ways of nature which are to be seen everywhere. They were of value to him, and they led to his feeling sorrow and heavy-heartedness at the fact of birth, old age, sickness, and death that are to be seen everywhere throughout the realms of samsara, both in ourselves, other people, and animals of all classes and types. Whenever a bodily form appears and is established, the process of natural changes is bound to be the shadow which follows such a body. And this is the first lesson which the Lord learned using reason as the basis for comparing himself with others, people and animals, who had identical characteristics. These characteristics are those of Anitta, the natural process of change which was found throughout him and them, and Dukkha, the distress in this world, which is not a world full of happiness, but a world of turmoil. Who can live at ease? Nobody can when they have a physical body, which means that such a body is bound to be of a nature that leads to unbearable anxiety. We cannot just live at ease without sleeping, lying down, eating food, walking back and forth, and changing our postures. We cannot not do these things. So if this is the case, we cannot live in this world. In other words, when I cannot not do, it means that this world is a world of cannot, and to live in ease and contentment here is not possible. Nor is it possible to sit, lie down, and have no need to eat or sleep, for one cannot just do what is easy for the body and pleasant for the mind. So this world became entirely a world of cannot in the heart of the Lord. What world is there that is a world of can? So he investigated, reviewing and searching with reason. There is only the Loguttara Thamma. In other words, that Thamma which, when a person has attained it, enables him to go entirely beyond the world of cannot, and reach the world of can, the world of attainment and the world of certainty, the Loguttara Thamma, which is the highest Thamma. Then the Lord resolved to leave his home that night. But even though that he knew that he was a prince and that he had loyal supporters throughout the whole country who were in the shadow of his own perfection, he left on his own, followed only by Channa to lead his horse Gantaka back. He left in order to investigate the fundamental reasons of what he had seen that night until it all became absolutely clear to him. In brief, the Lord worked, training for six years, and he almost died, because when the prince left home and became ordained, he was prepared to risk his life, for he had never before had to put up with difficulties. In saying that he was a prince, everything about him was that of a prince. All his possessions were those of a prince. The food he ate was that of a prince, and where he dwelt and everything he used of all kinds were those of a prince. When the Lord left home and was ordained, he had become a beggar, and his status as a prince had disappeared. All that remained was a poor man, or a beggar, without anything that was of any value at all, for his belongings, dwelling place, and everything else had become those of a beggar, and he had not a thing left of the former prince. Then he endeavored to discard the conceit of being a prince until it left him entirely, and there remained just a beggar, the same as any other beggar that we may see. But it turned out to be a way of life which was pleasant for the Lord and suited him, and it was also a suitable basis to enable him to become the teacher of the world. Then he investigated the principles of birth, old age, suffering, and death, 
which are the world of cannot, the world which cannot endure, the world which whirls around, changing in this way, changing in that way, excited about old things, excited about new things, and this kind of thing is what is called loka vattajakka, the whirling round of the world. When the Buddha had investigated this world until it had become quite clear, he saw that his heart was also full of this world. In other words, his mental activities, Zayatasikatamma, displayed instability, whirling about changing, becoming good, becoming evil, going into the past or future, forming together, going back and forth. His seeing clearly with Banya in this way is called Batsayagara or Bhattacasamuppada, dependent origination, precisely investigating the arising and ceasing of sankaras both of self and of others throughout the whole universe, Logatatu, and seeing that everywhere it has the characteristics of the Delakarna. In other words, Anitta throughout the universe, starting from oneself and going out, Dukkha, all have Dukkha in the same way, Anatta. Having died, anyone who wants to take anything from this world to the next one cannot. Ultimately, even a single hair, which is the lightest thing, and being attached to this body goes wherever we go, when we have left this world, we must submit to the hairs being returned to its original source, which is earth, water, air, and fire. What remains is the heart and the things which are hidden there, these being the good and the evil which one has accumulated in one's lifetime. Both of these natures are shadows following us. When the Lord had come to know the foregoing, he again considered that Demerit is evil, and this is a thing that may be clearly seen, but to where will merit, which is good, follow us? So he investigated merit and demerit again to see them clearly by way of the Bhatsayagara, which is called the Bhatitsasamuppada, searching inwardly until he reached Abhidda Bhatsayasankara. Ignorance is the condition of the Sankaras. This is the first step of the Bhatitsasamuppada formula, which goes through the remaining eleven steps, ending with old age, suffering, and death. The story of birth originates from Avidza, being connected step by step, branching out from there, as a branch leads to a twig, which leads to a leaf, to a flower, to a fruit, going from the trunk outwards. Finally, we get back to Samudayohodi, the cause of Avidza. In the simile, this may be taken as the preceding cause of the tree, i.e. the seed, also the fruit as the cause of the next tree. Samudayohodi, the Lord Buddha called the origin of Avidza, the one to which they are all linked back, and from which they branch out in this way. When the Lord investigated backwards and forwards until he saw clearly and truly into Avidza that it has arisen from nature, which is the heart, then he investigated precisely with Banya into the heart, which is Avidza. On the night of the full moon of the sixth month, the Lord saw with absolute clarity, and Avidza broke and dispersed from the heart of the Lord on that night. So it seems that our Lord Buddha was enlightened on this same night. After six years, all the questions about birth, old age, sickness, and death, and about the whirling round and changeability of the jitta and all the tatus and kantas came to an end. And he knew clearly that Buddha, which is purity, had arisen in the heart of the Lord. Buddha, freed from the kilesas, tanha, and asava. Buddha, which is entirely pure. Buddha, the end of all worry. This may be called gone entirely free, beyond this world of cannot, which changed and became the world that was given the name of Logotara Tamma, in other words, Tamma which is above the mundane realm, and which is free from the world of birth, old age, sickness, and death. And he was the first to do this. When the Lord had become enlightened on that night, he had the intention to teach others. But to begin with, the Lord was discouraged from guiding and teaching others, for he saw that the Tamma that he had known and seen was beyond the capacity of people to be able to know and see who have Gilesas, as all of us have. But when he investigated, comparing himself with other people, he saw that he was a human being, the same as all other human beings in the world. What was the reason that he had been able to know and see? He traced back his practice and the stages through which he travelled, and he saw that when there is the practice and the method for going on in the right direction, they must be causes which readily enable one to reach the goal. So he had the intention to advise and teach others, for he saw that all beings, if they are trained and taught in the right way, will be able to know and see in the same way as himself. Therefore he decided in his heart to advise and teach others gradually. And thus it was that the Lord was his own teacher, and taught himself to completion first, 
after which he was able to be the teacher to teach the world to completion, gradually right up to the present day. Therefore, today all of us who are Buddhists have made the effort to come and increase our merit in this place which is associated with Venerable Tao Kun Tramitedi, who died and whose body was put in a funeral urn, and you have come to listen to a Tamma Desana and to accept the Tamma of sorrow in that the Venerable Tao Kun Tramitedi and ourselves are composed of four elements, earth, water, air, and fire, in the same way, as in the Bali quotation at the beginning of this Desana, Atzerang Vadayangayo, the body is not a stable lasting thing, as with the venerable Tao Kuns, Patawinga Tisesate Chotoa Beta Winyarno. However it is, it must lie on the ground when consciousness has departed from it. This shows to all of us that we should contemplate he who has died and make comparison with we who are still living. In what ways are there differences? They are different in that one who has consciousness, Winyarna, is still in charge of himself as against he whose consciousness is gone, of whom they just say, he is dead. When consciousness is gone from ourselves, what will they then say of us? We must go in the same way as the Venerable Tao Kun, who shows the moral for all of us at this present time. Therefore, all of us who have come here have come to accept the Tamma of sorrow, which is the cause for us to think about ourselves, so that we shall not be careless and indolent in the performance of virtue, which is a means to promote one's heart so that it may be in the future born in a good place, which is a means to promote one's heart so that it may in the future be born in a good place. Then, even if one is born as a human being, one will be a good person who is clever, under the influence of good tendencies, having abilities and also property, wealth, enjoyment, and servants that will come from the influence of one's own virtue. When one is dead, there is an end to the doing of good and evil, and then one will probably experience the fruits of the gumma that one has done. At present, on this occasion, it is not too late for any of us, for we are in a suitable age and time which is called madtima, middle, median, insofar as it concerns the practice of virtue, for we are able to behave in such ways as will lead to development both in the world and in tamma by means of our own actions. When we die, we will from then on have lost the situation in which we are able to do good and evil, and this the Lord compared to a log of firewood which is useless, except that firewood can still be used to cook food or in other ways, whereas when we are dead we are no use neither as fuel nor to make charcoal nor as salted fish or fish sauce. So we say dead men have no value, and they can no longer practice the ways of virtue. The Lord constantly said that Nibbanang Baramang Sunyang, Nibbana is the tamma which is void of dukkha, danger, and all kinds of faults and blemishes. At the same time, it is Nibbana Baramang Sulkang. As soon as one is void of the foregoing things, a change takes place into the tamma of supreme happiness, Sulka, which is superior to all forms of Sulka in this world. And thus, what mirth, what pleasure, where all is ever burning. Tamabada 5, 146. Therefore, let all of us quickly follow the Dathagata now. Do not let yourselves be negligent and careless in your life and your jitta, your heart, which is evident just in your breathing. For when your breathing finally ceases, whether you are young or old or however else, it is just said that you die. Therefore, do not let yourselves be negligent and careless with your breath, for the fire of the Gilesas and Danha is spreading and burning the hearts of those who are careless. But those who are clever will gain freedom and go with us, the Tathagata, free from the power of the Gilesas to overtake us. You must hurry and follow us, the Tathagata, in the various methods of practice, in Dana, generosity, in Sila, and in Pawana. You must examine your body and see it clearly. Look at the skin, the flesh, the whole body, and see it clearly with banya. The skin outside, which we go and watch at the cinema, at the folk drama, and the theatre, is skin which will increase craving, pride, and conceit. From children to adults, it spoils people's characters and wastes a lot of money, because they rarely gain any good moral teaching, and apart from this, it generally leads to people becoming too engrossed in them. In looking at the skin, flesh, sinews, bones, and all the other parts of our bodies, which is the cinema within ourselves, there is no need to spend money, and ultimately it will arouse the tamma of sorrow, which causes us to walk in the footsteps of the Buddha, with insight into the banefulness of this mass of dukkha, of which he taught, saying, 
Gonu Haso Gimanando Nitang Bajalite Sati. Do not be too cheerful, gay, and joyful. Look at the body, old age, dotage, senility. It's breaking up and destruction. For its destruction will not take place anywhere but within yourself, and death will take place just within yourself. Hurry and search for virtue, for even now the sun has not yet gone down. In other words, one is not yet dead. Hurry and follow the Tathagata now, so that all of you will be safe. Then the fires of Raga, Dosa, and Moha will never again surround and scorch you, like us, the Tathagata, for we, the Tathagata, have been born for the last time, and we have cut ourselves away from friends and companions. In other words, from birth, old age, death, and from all worries, and we need not come to the hard and turbulent world again. This is the Tamma that was taught so that all of us Buddhists should know it and be awake to it, and not addicted to heedlessness. And this Tamma teaching that the Lord taught is always Madhima, the middle way. On any day, or whenever someone does good, gives dana, develops their meditation, pavana, guards their sila, it is virtue the result of which is apparent at all times. Let us follow the Tathagata in this way, for this is the instruction of the Lord Buddha which displays the story of that nature which is more excellent than anything else in the world. In other words, Nibbanang Baramang Sunyang, which means Nibbana is the Tamma that is entirely void of all things. This means that there is not even the least Dukkha in Nibbana. And further, Nibbanang Baramang Sukhang, there is no sukha which any of us have ever experienced in this world to equal the sukha of Nibbana. And once again, Abayata vinyarno niratangva galingarang. None of you should become enraptured and pleased with a log of firewood which is going to break up and die away, nor with the breath which goes in and out until it goes for good. You must follow us, the Tathagata, in your routine duties, in your practice, in giving dana, in sila, and in pavana. Do not be indifferent and careless in your life and formations, Zevita Sankara, for such as they are dying all over the earth, and they are teachers teaching us. Why then is everyone so heedless when they are showing us as though shouting at us to hurry and develop ourselves so as to follow the Lord and attain freedom from those dangers which are the mass of dukkha that dwells in our bodies and hearts, Zitta, and are burning around us all the time without letting up for a moment? The constituents of our bodies are always defying us and telling us that this state is of such a nature as is bound to break up. If we should put it in normal forms of speech, it is as though we were asked, Do you yet know the mass of dukkha which fills you? At all times it shows its advantage and hold over us, for if we do not eat or lie down and sleep regularly, these kandhas are bound to break up and disperse, for they are things which cannot remain passive. So we must try to humor and support them. We must look after and take care of them in their four postures. These are the things that we must do for our bodies. But insofar as revealing the whole of this tamma, you who are listening will bring yourselves to do the practice and gain results and benefits for yourselves. The amount, depending on your ability, upon the strength of your sati and banya, on your own thoughts, which are able to accord with the strength of your sadha and ability, and you are not liable to waste your effort. Today I have commented upon Atzerangwatayangayo Patwing Atisesati, regardless of whose body, non-enduring is the story of repeated birth and death. As for ourselves, if we reckon that we shall reach sixty or seventy years old, from then to the day we die is not long, as though it is only an hour. Wasting time and repeating birth, death, and dukkha over and over again were troublesome things for the wisest of men, which means the Lord Buddha. But even though we are unable to do so as the Lord did, we should at least examine his example and make a special effort to do the practice according to his teaching. This will be for our development and prosperity, both in this life and in future lives, and we will not waste our time as human beings, which is the highest form of life and superior to all other beings, who do not have the opportunity as we do to be in control of the wealth of being human at this time. In conclusion of this, May the power of the merit of the Lord Buddha as well as the Tamma and the Sankha overshadow all of you Buddhists who have made the effort to come with willing hearts, and may you have bodily happiness and ease of heart every day. Having now given some explanations of the Tamma of the Lord Buddha, 
This would seem to be sufficient for the time being, so I beg leave to stop here. Evang. Thus it is.